excited I am that you are all here. Um, and you might be getting the sense by now that the pet, we founded the Alliance 10 years ago. And when we founded the Alliance, it was a bunch of volunteers. And we were really just struggling to find a way to clean up the country. And it was a fight. It was definitely something where we were scrapping and yelling at people and egging people on.
a meeting where it's going to announce to the community a couple things. First, it's going to announce how it's going to study the creek over the next several years to come up with a really specific plan for how to clean up the creeks. Um, what EPA does is it takes several different plans and compares them and figures out which is what plan is the most effective while being financially viable. Um, to get to the question of whether or not we should be dredging or tapping, it would be impossible to dredge all of the contaminated sediment out of the creek. In some places it goes down 30 feet and that's just not possible. Similarly, there are places where that contaminated sediment is built up and the creek is too shallow to functionally use an industrial waterway, not to mention the fact that that means it's closer to the biota and what lives on top of the water. And so we want to dredge some of it. And what this planning process will do is identify those locations and figure out where to dredge and where to cap. Um, that'll take a good four or five years, and you know some people are frustrated by that, but I look at it as EPA is doing a good job, and they're doing a lot to involve the community. And that's the second thing that'll be announced this uh, at this set of meetings next week is the formation of the community advisory group, and that's a body of concerned citizens, concerned businesses, basically anyone who's interested and has a and, and, and has a concern about the remediation plan to be on a committee to talk with EPA and to guide EPA through the community's concerns. And we're going to make sure that we keep, you know, the truck traffic to the minimum so that there are less emissions concerns for residents. We're going to make sure that EPA takes into consideration the needs of businesses along the street to keep their behavior held later in the remediation. We're going to talk to EPA about implementing workforce development programs associated with their mediation. So we're hoping these residents can gain job skills through this massive construction project. And we're going to talk about kind of new and exciting ways to build, deal with the dredge bill. You know, certainly most of it's going to get sent to your hazardous wasteland bill, but some of it we can look at doing uh, pilot programs, whether it's turning it into tiling or, uh, you know, there are a handful of things that people are doing uh, things that people are doing with dredge fill and, and maybe we can have some new green startup industries on the creek as a result of the remediation process. So these are all topics of um, interest for the CAG and I think they're things that you know every one of us has some sort of interest in. You know you might be less concerned about economic development but more concerned about making sure EPA is towing the line environmentally. This is the place for you to come and voice those concerns and I even think to bring a class. Um, and and uh, it, it'd be a great place to involve students in democratic participation. Um, so that's my overview of Superfund. I'm also going to talk quickly about another set of environmental problems. Um, and I'm heartbroken because one of our members, our vice chair, was at the very last minute unable to make it today. But he's someone I wanted to introduce to all of you as a really innovative educator himself. And so I'm going to refer you to a couple topics of interest of his and then give you some homework to go look at his website to get in touch with him. Um, and his name's Michael Heimbinder and he's the executive director of an organization called Habitat Map. The website's habitatmap.org and he does phenomenal work with community investigation of environmental exposures and mapping and sharing those environmental exposures um, through web-based platforms. A uh, great example is that we've been really struggling to get the State Department of Health to do a health assessment of the health care neighborhoods. Um, the State Department of Health has been completely resistant to going and figuring out if there's a correlation with environmental exposures and the health problems that we see in Creek Point and NASDAQ um, and what's going on in the city. So, as an alternative,
two of his big concerns along the creek have been um, the dissolved solvent flues. These were discovered when ExxonMobil was doing testing for the oil spill. They're unrelated to the oil spill, but they are plumes of dissolved organic solvents that are in gaseous form underground and migrate up and can end up in basements in the first floors of homes and schools. Um, this is an example of an environmental problem where education is hugely important, particularly in the neighborhoods where children live. A lot of residents were really resistant to having their homes tested for the dissolved solvent plume exposure. Um, they were scared of property value concerns. They had kind of a fatalist view of their health. They didn't want to. Um, they didn't want to scare their neighbors, and so they resisted. And this is a place that if children were learning about this in school and coming home and talking to their parents about it, the children could potentially be a bridge for parents to listening to government officials who they might not necessarily trust. Um, another concern of Michael that he explores extensively on his website is solid waste and how cities deal with solid waste. The Newtown Creek neighborhoods deal with Kate's was paid. How many, what percentage of New York City's municipal solid waste? Yeah. 60% 60. 60 of New York City's municipal solid waste comes through Newtown Creek neighborhoods, primarily East Williamsburg, Greenpoint. And that's a lot of trucks. That's a lot of waste. And we don't always know, you know, many people don't know what happens to it. And certainly uh, there's a lot of political activity trying to influence what happens to it. Um,